Yo, what's going on guys? Watomo Melon back here again. And as always, if you guys want to support the channel, the best thing to do is just click the link in the description below before you make any purchase on eBay. Um, additionally, check out my main channel, uh, monthly content there. But the first thing I wanted to talk about today are the quarter century secret rares from Legendary Collection 25th uh, anniversary. And I must say, I was not expecting these sorts of prices to stick. I'll be the first one to say that I was expecting a play set of the God cards to go for between 10 to 50, or, or excuse me, a set of the three God cards to go for 10 to $15. I thought these things were going to be printed to oblivion. And to a certain extent, I think that they have been, but I think... I don't know if the market just hasn't opened up enough of this sealed product, but, you know, it's crazy to think that the sealed product is doing as well as it has been doing, given how much they printed it. Like, they printed this thing into the ground. I know there are multiple waves of this coming. Uh, the sort of distributor that I have access to um, released an email a couple months ago about how they're already starting to... Uh, pull distributors for how much they want for these sort of later waves of this product. So I think this product is going to be, you know, in free flow to the market. I don't think there isn't going to be enough of this product. And so I do think that these prices are going to come down a bit. Um, but nonetheless, I'm very surprised, you know, to see that a set of the God cards is 30 bucks. That's, you know, two to three times what I thought. I, I'm I'm genuinely impressed. They look incredible, so I'm not surprised that people are demanding them. But I, I guess I'm more supply surprised at how little supply there is relative to the demand. I don't know if I don't know. Maybe the market just needs to correct um, because there are quite a few listings for each of these things. So who who knows where it's going to end up? It just seems insane that one of these boxes gives you six classic packs and one of these promos, and, you know, the average promo price is what, like, almost $15, or, you know, not almost $15, maybe like 11 or 12 once you average all of them out, that's, you know, more than a third of the money back immediately, and you also get six classic packs to open up, so I don't know where this is headed, but, you know, Assuming that they don't rewave it like 50 times, which is a big assumption, I think that this might be something you want to keep your eyes on, uh, especially if you were able to get in at really low prices, you know, early on on pre-orders. This is might be something you want to hold. But beautiful cards. Uh, it's a little bit of a shame that this tablet artwork was used for <laughs> Blue Eyes and Red Eye or Blue Eyes and Dark Magician, but. Um, at the end of the day, it is a little bit dangerous to buy specific, you know, the tablet arts, for example, because it seems to be the case that they're releasing uh, the more desirable artworks also in this quarter century secret rare. Uh, Dark Magician is already confirmed in sort of its, um, the, the starter deck artwork in this quarter century secret rare, and once that hits the market, I don't know how desirable the tablet art is going to be, um, and my assumption would be that they're going to do some other artwork of Blue Eyes, and given that this is probably the least desired artwork of Blue Eyes, I can't imagine that this thing is going to maintain the same price point that it has been. Um, but nonetheless, incredible product. Um, you know, I'm just genuinely impressed that it is doing as well as it has, and, and you know, I think this is an awesome product because it's going to get people back into collecting. I mean, there are a lot of people that you know, collected many, many years ago, almost two decades ago, and this is a great bridge. You know, they might have seen that cards are hot on social media, but because of, uh, you know, recent events, it was hard to get their hands on the packs that they really wanted to open, which are the classic packs, but, you know, these packs are available. You can get some of the new bling, um, and, and that will serve as a bridge to get them into, you know, modern cards as well as the classic cards. So I just... Overall, I'm, I'm super happy with this product. I do wish that the 21st or the 25th anniversary uh, packs, the classic packs, they did a little twist, I wish. Um, you know, if they had added in quarter century secret rares as, you know, maybe one every couple of boxes, uh, you could get, you know, the LOB artwork, blue eyes, or, or, you know, some amount of the secret rares or 
ultra rares in that art um in quarter century secret rare i think that would have been awesome but i've talked enough about this i i'm surprised next up we have cyberstorm access um overall i don't really see much that as a collector i'm really looking at besides the far firewall dragon singularity um i think the secret rare looks incredible um but it does have a starlet rare so obviously that's the one collectors are going to go after um I don't know how playable it is. I'm assuming most of the value here is, is from its playability, but this is one that, as a collector, you know, I'm always drawn to dragons, and I think that Firewall Dragon's a classic, and so it's conceivable to me that this, if, especially if it is a competitive uh, card, something that is, is actually good, I could see this, you know down the road being pretty expensive for people that enjoyed the deck and also has a cool artwork. I, I just love how the background is, you know, a bunch of different colors. I, I think they did a great job with that card. Um, other than that, I know people are going to be going after this uh, Guiding Quem the Virtuous. Not my, <laughs> not really up my alley, but, and then also this Vsauce Starfrost I know is a competitive card. Um, it had an original print, I think, Secret Rare and like a sneak pre sneak peek preview uh, ultra rare, but you know this one doesn't really interest me. It's honestly the only thing in this set is the Firewall Dragon and then Chaos Angel, but because it's only a Secret Rare, I I'm not gonna go after this, especially because I think all of the value here is playability. It would be cool if you know say this becomes a really important. Uh, uh, becomes a really important competitive card. If they give it something like an ultimate rare, then I might consider picking it up, but at its current moment, not really for me. Although the set, you know, it's doing quite well for itself. I think that given the, that the past two sets have been doing pretty well, uh, recent sets have been doing pretty well, I think that there are many fewer people speculating on boxes, and I think that bodes well for, you know, people who have been collecting these boxes sealed i think i think there's less of the sort of casual investor i, I hate calling people that <laughs> who are just picking up these boxes for no reason but i i think there's less of that going on uh next up we have uh, amazing defenders and just looking at the crs i don't think that there's a whole lot to really say. I mean, purely has blown me away in sort of how expensive these are. Um, I said I would pick up purely if it was like under a $30 card. Definitely not under a $30 card, although I couldn't have anticipated how many buyouts this would have gotten. And I believe it's also a playable card right now. So um, the reason that all four of the purely collector rares are up there is because they're actually quite good. Um, other than that, you just have a lot of playable stuff. Not a whole lot that I'm really looking at out of here. Obviously, Card Trooper's cool, but um, I'm not a huge fan of Card Trooper, and I wouldn't pick it up for this much money. So we'll see where this set ends up. I, I don't know if I'll cover it again. I just think that, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of a, an interesting side set. Next up, we have Collector Rares, and we're looking we're sorting by best selling on TCG Player. You can see that there are a lot of competitive mainstays, not surprisingly. Um, the Rescue Ace stuff, uh, I know recently has either announced support or the support came out in Cyberstorm Access. I think it's announced support, that's quite good. Um, coming to the OCG, or maybe it's in the OCG and performing well, but I know this got bought out, uh, and obviously the other Rescue Ace stuff has been going up as well. Um, other than that, you know, it's mainly just competitive cards when you sort by best selling. Solemn Judgment is an interesting one. I think this is becoming competitively more viable because I saw that the Ultimate Rare is also one of the more, uh, liquid Ultimate Rares right now. So, you know, that's interesting to see. You have this card on your Mark Get Set Duel. I like that they sort of have added in these kind of gimmicky cards as collector rares they have this card and also the duelist academia or duelist academy i forget what they call it um but that card's also pretty fun <laughs> and you know they have a 5ds one they have a gx one it's kind of a gimmicky looking card but i think it might be something that if you're a collector these things are pretty cheap um so it might be something you're interested in black luster soldier legendary swordsman interesting art not, I'm not the biggest fan of the art, to be honest. I think they could have done more with it, 
but it's still nonetheless a pretty cool card. Wake up your elemental hero CR. I just hate paying this much for this card knowing how cheap it is in the, the Japanese rarities. I mean, I guess if you're an elemental hero collector, you probably have to get this card because it has all the, or a lot of the hero stuff on it, but, you know, not really my style. Moving along, you can see that a lot of these cards have really fallen out. Um, it seems like collector rares are, are card, the ones that do the best are, are not necessarily the collectible ones, it's more so the ones that are playable. They just provide kind of that high rarity option for, for players. Um, and it does look quite nice. I think that these collector rares have been given the short end of the stick for a while. Gate Guardian, I don't know if it's moved a whole lot. Maybe dropped a couple of dollars. Torrential Tribute. This card looks quite nice. Cosmic Cyclone's only forty dollar market market price. That's one to keep your eye out for. But not going to look through every single one. It's just collector rares as a whole haven't stuck too well. I think most of the side sets because they're rare. They're rare enough that. You only get three or four per case, that so they don't add a ton of value to the cases themselves. Um, but most side sets, because they only have ultra rares as the next highest rarity, they don't have a ton of value. I just think that side sets are in a weird place right now where they don't, they're not that great to open up if you're a vendor, but also as someone who's purchasing signals singles, you're not going to pay a whole lot for a CR. At least most people aren't. Next up, we have Battles of Legend, Armageddon, the classic Pandemic Chase. We have 10,000 Dragon. I love how this card looks, but you can see that it's coming down, down, down. Uh, there was a sale at a little over $1,000, which is quite low. A light play sale at $1,000. Um, and you can see that there's some listed from some verified sellers. Cash Cow Games, garbage seller, let me tell you. Um... I have a return being sent back to them. But <laughs> other than that, you can see that, you know, there are verified sellers at $1,150. Next up, we have the Secret Pharaohs Rare uh, from King's Court, as well as Magnificent Mavens. I've just been, again, this is one that I didn't really see holding the sort of prices that they have been. You can see that the, you know, lowest listing is $260 with a market price of $183. Uh, for the Secret Pharaoh's Rare Magnificent Maven's Blue Eyes White Dragon LOB art. So, I mean, that's pretty insane. Secret Pharaoh's Rare Dark Magician Girl. Very few listings and also just super high price point. I think maybe I underestimated just how rare these things are because I don't think that they're sparkly enough to really command the sort of prices that they have. I think it must just be that there's so few of these things. Because the Ultras are what we saw in EU, and then the Secrets were in NA. Personally, I think the Secrets look better. I think a lot of people have performed some sort of revisionist history, uh, where they're making it seem like people have preferred Ultra Rares the whole time. Um, Secret Pharaoh's Rares, I think, aesthetically, were always preferred for the King's Court cards, uh, the God cards. And so... You know, I, I just don't know where that narrative is coming from. I get that the ultra rares might be a little harder to come by because um, they're only in European English speaking countries. Um, but I, I don't know. You can see that Mirror Force has been completely bought out. There's one listing on that thing. Um, and generally, the listings are pretty low where it's pretty easy to make these things disappear, as you can see. Uh, let's see when it occurred. Well, it looks like someone has been just sort of over time clearing these things off the market um, and you can see that there's only one left so that's kind of funny next up we have ghost ogre and snow rabbit ultimate rare out of ots5 uh, you can see that there have been quite a few sales especially during bonus bucks you can see that people were really really buying these things up and the graph shows that this thing has jumped you know f about 40 bucks um, in the past month or so if we look at this, actually in the past two weeks or so, it's really jumped up a lot. Um, if we look at just near Mint, you can see that it's a $250 card. Interesting hand trap, obviously a playable one, so not surprising that it's holding that sort of value. Another hand trap that has shot up recently is Droll and Lockbird. You can see that the near mint price for these things is there's one motivated seller at 200, and then after that it's 220. 
and then it pretty quickly goes up to 250, although these ones have playsets available. So we'll see where this one ends up. Um, again, very playable card, so it's not surprising. Next up, we have Astral, pra Astral Pack Debris Dragon. It looks like someone on with bonus bucks and on the third just decided, I'm going to clear out all of these things. And you can see that what's left are, I'm assuming, the unverified sellers the person didn't want to buy from. Um, and then also a $140 listing with two of them available. I don't know why someone's buying out Debris Dragon. I don't know if this is playable in a past format, but interesting, I guess. <laughs> Next up, we have Atlayan Dragoons, one that has seen a pretty significant sales rate over the past couple of months um, and starting to get cleared out. You can see that the, the market price is around $107, but the lowest listing is $129. So it's one to keep your eye out for. Next up, we have Dandelion, another one that's on an upwards trajectory. For some reason, something happened like as we switched from March to April and people just started buying out a ton of these ultimate rares. <clears throat> you can see that the lowest listing from a verified seller is 220 and then there's a motivated unverified seller at 210. But other than that, there's not a whole lot there. I mean, I love this card. It's a fun card. It's a classic card. But I don't know if I'm ready to pay, you know, $200 for something like this. Like, this to me is kind of an insane price. Infinite and Permanence, not the same trajectory where it just shot up. Uh, well, I guess it, it has definitely increased. Actually, this is kind of the same trajectory. It just already was kind of slowly, slowly appreciating. If we look at the yearly curve, it, it's been a bit... Um, up and down, but it's really on an upward trajectory right now. And you can see that the lowest listing for an English copy is $250, which is, you know, $50 above where this market price shows. So Infinite Impermanence is at one of its all-time highs. Um, I don't know why they still have the sample here, but this is an interesting card and certainly a playable one. Finally, we're going to look at the best-selling Ghost Rares. Obviously, Ghost from the Mast 2 Ghost Rares are on here, as well as some Ghosts from the Past 1 Dark Magician. Um, it's interesting to see Stardust Dragon has been really uh, being purchased a lot. I'm a bit surprised at the market price of only $300. Um, I mean, this is a really, really iconic Ghost Rare. One of the most iconic of all time. Okay, so the lowest near mint listing is 345 and then after that you're up to 375 and then after that you're up to 400 uh, and then after that, you're way, way higher. So I wouldn't be surprised if this gets cleared out. We'll have to see. Um, but you can still pick up... Oh, okay. Lightly played's 280, so... Um, I guess it is a pretty expensive card. So those prices seem pretty fair. Um, but beautiful, beautiful card. I don't own one of these anymore. I sold mine. But this is a, a really, really iconic one. So I'm a bit surprised at the sales rate on this. It must have been bonus bucks uh, where people were going crazy for this thing. Nah, there actually weren't that many being picked up in exclusively bonus bucks. It looks like it has been sort of this slow, um, I guess, attrition of the card. Uh, or, you know, people are slowly picking these things up off the market. I love Stardust. Black Rose again, awesome card. Cyber Dragon Ghost Rare. I have a Ghost from the Past 2. This is kind of like the, the ugly stepchild of Ghost from the Past 2. I mean, Cyber Dragon is one of the most iconic cards of all time, but it's Ghost from the Past 2 printing really isn't that desired, and I believe there's a 25th or, or a quarter century secret rare coming out of Cyber Dragon in the Megatons, and so I don't know how well that bodes for something like this Ghost Rare, because are you really going to pick up this as your modern printing when there's a quarter century secret rare that might be half the price? I don't know. I mean, I personally think that I like the Ghost Rare a bit more than the Quarter Century Secret Rare, but I still like the Quarter Century Secret Rare. I don't know what Konami's doing with all these printings of the same iconic classic cards and tons of new rarities. Um, I think it just, you know, it's making all these new printings dog-eat-dog, -dog, and people just are going to be reluctant to put their money when they know that a new, shinier printing's coming out in a year of the exact same art. I don't know. I think... Konami needs to start leaning more on alternate arts and printing some of the classic cards that just haven't gotten the love, like Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. 
I think people would have loved that in Quarter Century Secret Rare. Probably would have loved it more than Cyber Dragon as a collectible. So I, I don't know where they're going with all this. Um, some of the other ones, Blue Eyes Ultimate has actually been appreciating quite significantly. Yep, as you can see. Upward Trajectory. Let's see the yearly. So, you know, obviously, uh, upon release, it dropped quite a bit, but um, when you zoom in on that endpoint, it really is starting to appreciate. There aren't many other high rarity printings of the cards, so it's not the most surprising thing. Another Dark Arm Dragon, this is getting a quarter century secret rare, so I don't know where that puts the ghost rare of it. Um, Red Dragon Archfiend, I can see that there are a few, few listings here. This is one to keep your eyes on, because Signer Dragon collectors who want all the Signer Dragons and, and ghost rare... They're definitely picking this up. And so those 5Ds collectors, this is one that they have to have. And so it's not surprising, you know, even though Red Dragon Archfiend isn't the most iconic card, I think a lot of collectors need this to complete their, their 5Ds Ghost Rare set. Other than that, you have some of the, the classic offenders, more Ghost from the Past and Ghost from the Past 2 stuff, more modern Ghost Rares. Um, you also have Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, which is one that I thought was pretty underrated for a long time as just like an unlimited print. Um, Photon Shockwave, I believe, is 10 years old now. This is a decade old card, if not older. And it really hasn't had the same love as kind of the, the poster child of Zexel collecting. So we'll see where it ends up. I've already started talk for more than 20 minutes, so I'll probably end it here. But thank you guys for watching. I haven't done one of these in a bit. So it was enjoyable to get back on the mic. It's been your boy Watomar Melon, and peace out.